Hey guys, this is just a little workflow setup that I use for Hair Strand Designer. So when you launch the software, a good little trick to do is just to bring the number of strands right down to zero. That way you've got a fresh start. Now I've made a little UV image from a little strip that I made in Max and here's the UV. So I just click this UV image button and I can play with the opacity here just to see it a bit better. So now that that's done, I'm going to click uh, on set one and just throw in some strands and I'm just going to move that in place change the length let's give it a little bit of variation and a little bit of tapering and maybe some spacing okay I'm just going to throw it on slow mode give me a better idea of how it's going to look and I'll just bring the UV image opacity right down ok, it looks pretty cool uh, I'm just going to go ahead and generate a colour map so it's going a bit slow now, I'm just going to chuck it on uh, fast mode fast mode just gives a, a limited number of strands that you, you can see plus it changes the, the distance now you can switch on slow mode and use the mouse wheel down to get like a high number of strands so we're seeing uh, quite a few strands at the minute and uh, by using the mouse wheel you can reclaim some performance back it's a good idea to work in single sets like this because it doesn't hamper the performance as much so I'm getting above 30 frames per second and just gonna adjust that a bit more and I just mouse wheel up get to see how that looks just change the length just a tiny bit yeah I'll just bring that opacity down and I think that's good cool so I'm going to go ahead and render um, some colour so I'll just give it some nice browns like two tone and some black dark red in there let's just bring that down this way and the tip tone uh, I'll just click this choose this then choose that one and then make that a little bit lighter it's a bit too much red in there so I'm just going to bring the saturation down ok and this is a bit to mustardy and a little bit less saturation and a little bit darker okay so that's going to be uh, my setup here and I'll go ahead and, ahead and save that as my setup let's call it brown and it means every time I do a strip I can come back in here, load in the UV image and just update the strands that way one at a time um, it's a bit more of a lengthy process but it's still faster than other tools that I've used and uh, I'm working on a sequel to this so uh, I'm going to make some new improvements so the main thing you can do in here to help speed it up if you are having issues um, if you're in Dyna mode it progressively updates when you press the button it thinks you're going to be doing some interaction with the UI so it actually crunches itself down in detail um, but if you're in slow mode, medium mode or fast mode those actually give you some reductions anyway if you're in any of those three modes you can use the mouse wheel up and down to change the definition on the fly just to get a bit more frame rate, your frame rate's up here and some people are getting one or two frames per second because they're trying to see all the strands in preview mode so preview mode affects performance because it's trying to show you kind of what you're going to get and um, these this rendering system is a bit expensive so just you know limit the software on what you want to see and when you want to see everything just right click to unselect that there and basically you know you get your other set so if I bring in more sets like that so this is a global value unless you click on one of these numbers there's a global value so it's a good idea to reduce that to zero when you start so that you get a fresh slate and then just start clicking on these 
and yeah that should be you good to go so I'm just going to click on a color map a mass map and a normal map here I think I'll also get an AO map from it um, maybe depth and uh, you don't want to generate too many strands uh, too many of these at a time but I'm okay because I'm only generating this one little set and that'll be fine so I'll just go ahead and click generate see what I get shouldn't take too long because it's only that one little set there okay so there's our normal map we've got our mask map color map get some depth and deal so that looks okay but I think I could do with more strands so I'll go back to my previewer and click on set one and then I'll just increase the number of strands up there now I don't actually see all of these but if I go into slow mode it's going to show me as much as possible it says it's showing 76 strands but I don't know if it can actually show that much um, it shows a maximum of 60 so you won't see it change much between 60 or higher but there is more strands going to be rendered in there I'll go for let's go for the full 100 <clears throat> so it is lagging at 3 because I'm on dyno mode or fast mode I'm on sorry I'm on slow mode so I'll just click on it medium mode <clears throat> if I really want to see what I'm going to get I do have to render so you don't have to render all your maps just click these until they become red let's just say I want the so get the depth maps a good way to see the information <clears throat> and it won't take as long to render so it speeds up your workflow a bit okay click on the depth map and just you know give it a check out I do want to add a little bit of root jitter the looks of it so I'm just going to add some root jitter there it takes me back to the previewer right away and I can see some changes so I had none to start with okay and it's a global value unless I've got uh, these selected so it's fine if I do want to add more strands it's fine so I'm just going to save that file again and uh, that's hsd brown and do a depth render once I've got that I'll get the same maps as before Okay, it's a little bit better it's it's fine it's not too uh, crazy like if you want flyaways I suggest maybe um, using another pack that I made where it's just a whole bunch of crazy hairs and mixing them together in Photoshop because um, this is a bit more of a kind of uniform hair tool it's not going to give you things like really erratic hairs but you can use like the mixers and things like that to get a bit more uh, you can get into the paths. If you look at any of my other videos, uh, you can actually get into these paths and make you know extra changes. You can see how it deforms that shape there, and um, and that's just with a small amount. If you want to come out with this, just hover over the X there. Uh, you change the amount of that. You can also change this sort of position offset, and you can make extra clumps as well. So if I just click on a clump two here, I bring in some strands. Let's make it have variation, which kind of treats it more like a kind of tapering effect. Let's add more strands in that. And I can bring that over the top. Like so. Let's do even more strands, a bit more tapering. Uh, a bit of variation. Right, so we've got that. I've got those two now and I want to add a little bit of uh, more root jitter to that one uh, a bit more tapering a bit less of this and maybe some more of the the mixers here so we do get a bit of uh, different you know different shape from these let's just bring the spacing up a bit to match that better and you can also play with the root and tip tone now these are globals um, I don't see any reason to not have them as globals because they still do a nice bit of variation in, in them and you can use the variation slider to get a bit more out of that um, so there's a nice set there I'm just going to uh, load that UV image in again 
think it disappeared on me. Uh, just to check. Oops, accidentally moved that. Okay. That looks fine. Okay, now I'll go ahead and render a depth. That looks a bit nicer. So you get two different forms doing different things in there, and that could look quite good when it's you're trying to build up a base. Okay. If I do want to make an adjustment, I'm just going to go into that and actually bring down the number of strands in that set. I don't want it to be too dominant. So I'll just do that. I'm just going to move it to the left of it just a little bit as well. Okay, and then I want to save it. Uh, I'll do it this way. If the buttons don't respond at first, just hold them down for a bit. Sometimes uh, they get a bit sticky and I think that's just to do with the response time. Let's put that in fast mode. Yeah, I don't see maybe we want to do it. Okay, let's just call this um, brown. Yeah, let's double write it that way. Don't know why the button stopped responding for a second there. Always seems to be the case when you stream. Right, so I've saved that and I want to do a depth, AO, uh, color map, mass map, normal map. I can do an RGB if I want to uh, use it in a custom shader, but I'm quite happy with just a brown for this. And I'll go ahead and generate. So it's going to generate a total of 122 uh, strands. So that's the total number of strands that generate 122 and it's previewing 20, 20 maximum strands per set in this mode. So in fast mode it does 20, in medium mode it does 40, in slow mode it does 60. So it gives it's always giving you a better idea what you're going to get, but it's going to hit performance, right? That's why these are here. And when you're in one of these three modes, you can get even more out of it, especially if you want to see the, the whole set. Right? It's, the, it's the only way I can really show you guys what you're going to get. Um, due to the nature of the way this tool was created to start with. I never expected it to uh, expand so much and there was only 8 sets to start with. I went to 11 and I'm working on Hairstrand Designer 2 which gives you uh, way more, much more. Uh, a completely different approach uh, to the whole system so that it basically means I need to rewrite it from the ground up so it's taking some time but yeah, I'm looking forward to, to that. So these are all generated now. I'm just going to click on the normal map. It looks a bit noisy in here, but in here you can see it's it's a little bit cleaner. And you can also click on the blur map a little bit and it will kind of smooth things a tiny bit. The best thing to do is actually take it to... Oh, I've got a little crash there. Uh, if it crashes like that, it will just restart itself and it should load up the, the last file. Um, so I'll let it do that. The only problem is I need to regenerate the maps. So sometimes uh, memory leaks happen for unforeseen circumstances and sometimes this happens or one of the colours changes which is just a, a bug that I don't understand yet. Uh, no way I could put that green colour in if I switch to RGB. Uh, I think what's happening is this red value is getting missed. So just go to the, the red and, and tone it up until you got you get to like roughly where you were. Uh, that's that's what I think is happening, but I'm not too sure why that happens. That's another unforeseen bug. But these things, you know, I'll be learning from and making improvements. I'm just going to put this into fast mode so I can work on this. Right, so. Everything's loaded back up. Uh, it's a good idea to like leave the AO out, A out to the end. So do those four first. AO is more expensive. 
and it does I think it's about 10 passes so it's like trying to render the whole set like 10 times but it does these overlays so it's, uh, it's a bit more hungry all right we've got these maps and let's just do the AO map oops so generate that one it's also a good idea to switch it to fast mode for rendering just just to make sure you're not stressing the software uh, so there we go we've got our AO map as well I can blur that up a little bit and color map and if you got your color map and press J it will overlay the AO map if it's available and if you go to the AO map and press J it will overlay the color map uh, just to give you an idea of how that AO might mix in um, so there's the color map there and then J right, so we've got some nice strands there with nice tapering at the top and the end and we've got our mask map if we want to sort of tighten that up later in Photoshop, then we can do, but it's got a nice blend on it and um, we're good to go. So I'm just going to export all of the maps with this big button up here. Uh, let's call this brown set one. You can call it whatever here, right? But then I can just choose that one, overwrite it, and it starts to save the files out. Don't try and save the files to the same folder as the application. They'll get moved to the app data version of the folder. It's kind of like a sandboxing um, thing that's in place to prevent files being, I don't know, missing or something. But anyway, that is good. If you do want to reset, press F6. Uh, if you do want more uh, performance, press F2. And that means when you're moving the, the mouse around, it's gonna, especially in Dyna mode actually, it, when you're moving the mouse, it's gonna like give you performance back not just when you're clicking but also when you're moving all right and then uh, so that's quite nice so so I recommend that workflow just gonna work bit by bit uh, you can turn everything on just be mindful it's gonna hit your frame rate thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoy using the tool please join the discord and post your work and now and again I'll give you a little sneak peek of what I'm doing for Hair Strand Designer 2 and even give you a build to try. Cheers, bye!